Hello and welcome back to another full step by step PC build guide. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the 2024 version of the NZXT H7 Flow. You'll find links to all the parts I've used in the video in the description. So let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our tempered glass side panel, we can simply pull it out from the back and lift it up and away. And our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. Just pop it out from the back and then lift it up and away. Taking a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you notice we've got this perforated area. It is for ventilation for our power supply down at the bottom. And NZXT are just going with mesh here. There's no additional dust filters. Taking a look at our top I.O., we've got a power button, two USB type A, a single type C, and a combined headphone and microphone jack. And to remove our top panel, it's just a simple matter of popping it up from the back. And again, there's no additional dust filters on the back of the mesh panel. Our case's front mesh panel simply pops off. And again, on the back of this panel, NZXT are going with just mesh. There's no additional dust filters. So with our front panel removed, you can see we've got three 120 millimeter, three pin non-ARGB fans installed at the front. It is possible to install up to three 140 millimeter fans, or if you prefer to mount a radiator at the front of the case, you can fit up to a 420 millimeter radiator. The front fans are installed on our removal fan stroke radiator bracket. There's two thumb screws at the top. You're gonna to need to loosen. And with these loosened, then you're going to be able to tilt the bracket out, lift it up to remove it from the case. Obviously, our 320mm fans are managed at the back, and as I'm not planning on removing these, I'm not going to free it up to fully remove the bracket. In terms of other fan and radiator mounting slots, at the top of the case, you can fit up to 320 or 240mm fans, or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator. At the bottom of the case, it's up to three 120 millimeter fans. While at the rear of the case, you can install either a 120 or 140 millimeter fan or radiator. Again, on the bottom of the case, there's no removable dust filters, and we've just got this sheet of mesh to act as a filter. And you can see your bottom fans are gonna be installed in this recess at the bottom of the case. And you'll notice we've got a couple of unusual features in this case. Our front, rear, and right side panel go all the way down to the table. And we've got this large space here where airflow is going to be drawn in from the side of the case and in from these bottom recess fans. And the way that NZXT have been able to do this is your power supply is going to be installed at the side at the back, meaning you don't need a full length power supply shroud at the bottom. You've only got this short power supply shroud, meaning you've got space for three 120 millimeter fans in front of it. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to EATX in size, and you want to go with the CPR cutter. The maximum height supported is 185 millimeters. You'll notice we don't have any additional cutouts for back connector motherboards, but this makes sense because we've got the three 120 millimeter fans installed at the front of our power supply and our motherboard. There's not going to be space at the back for this. We've got a cable cover bracket over to the right hand side of the motherboard, and provided you're going with an ATX motherboard or smaller, this is going to be in the right place. If you want to go with an EATX motherboard, you're going to have to move this bracket further towards the front of the case. So we need to remove two screws at the back holding the cable cover in place. We're then going to be able to slide the cable cover along and then we can re-secure it with the two screws we have removed. And you can see now in this position we've got plenty of extra space for EATX motherboards. In terms of graphics card support, you can see at the rear of the case we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets and we can fit really large graphics cards in the case up to a maximum length of 410 millimeters. Moving into the rear of the case, we've got our case accessory box here, so I'll go ahead and remove it. And in it, we've got all our screws individually packaged and labeled, and we've got a bag of cable ties. So in terms of cable management, this looks like it should be really good. We've got plenty of Velcro cable straps pre-installed, as well as other cable tie down points. Cable root and space also looks to be pretty good at 34 and a half millimeters. In terms of drive mounting, we've got this drive bracket behind our motherboard where you're going to be able to mount either two, two and a half inch or two, three and a half inch drives. And you can see the screw holes are labeled either HDD or SSD. To remove this bracket, there's a captive screw at the top we're going to need to loosen. And then we can tilt the bracket out and lift up to remove it. So you're simply going to set your drives here turn it round and use the screws from the case accessory box to screw them in from the back. We have another drive bracket at the bottom of the case that's held on with a captive thumb screw. And with it loosened, we're going to be able to pull the bracket backwards to remove it from the case. And in this bracket, you're going to be able to mount a further two, two and a half inch drives. So your power supply is going to be installed here on its side. There's little rubber pads for it to rest on. And the maximum length of supported power supplies is up to 200 millimeters. So in terms of our case cables, we've got a HD audio cable. Our front panel connectors are organized into a single cable. We've got our USB 3.0 cable and our front panel type C cable. It's nice to see that our front fans have been connected up with a triple splitter cable. So we've just got one four pin PWM cable we need to plug into the motherboard to control all three of the fans. It is important to mention while we do have a four pin connector here, 
if we take a look at the fans, they're actually only got three pin connectors on them. So it is important when we're setting up these fans in our motherboard bias that we run them in DC mode. To open our socket cover, we're going to push this lever down and out, bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard, and then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can lower our CPU down into the socket. Once we're happy it's sitting correctly in the socket, we can go ahead and close the socket cover down again. And then if we close the lever, the black bit of plastic is going to pop off and we'll put in our motherboard box for safekeeping. We're going to be installing our M.2 SSD in the top heatsink. I'm going to need to remove the two screws holding it in place. If you're using the motherboard from new, there's going to be some plastic protection here you're going to need to remove and also on the back of the heatsink. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the socket if we flatten it down and then we close this little lever here to secure it in place. And then we can return the heatsink. We're going to install our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so I'll open the clips on these slots. Then all we need to do is line our RAM up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. To install the brackets for our CPU cooler, we're going to need to remove the stock clips. They're each held on the two screws. We're then going to take the brackets that come with our AIO and set them into place. And you'll notice that they have a little arrow on them pointing towards the CPU, so you put them on the right way round. And then we're going to secure these brackets into place with the original motherboard screws. Next we can go ahead and set the motherboard into the case. And you'll notice that once the middle standoff goes through the middle hole, it's going to help hold the motherboard in place, and we're not going to put a screw into this standoff. Then we're going to use eight of the screws labelled 6 32 by 5 millimeters to secure the motherboard to the case. Next thing to do is get our case cables installed, and our HD audio cable is going to go in this header on the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring it through the cutout, and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. Next to it, we've got a system fan header, so we'll bring the triple splitter cable coming from our front fans through line it up with a header and push into place. Our front panel connectors are going to go to this header on the bottom right hand side of the motherboard and the pins over towards the left hand side of this header we're going to want to plug into. And we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. Yeah, we've got a USB 3.0 cable which is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with a header and push into place. Just above it we've got our front panel type C header. So again we'll bring our cable through the cutout, line it up with a header, and push into place. And again, we'll just pull the excess cable in behind the cable bar. We're now ready to install our power supply. It is fully modular, coming without any of the cables plugged in. I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables that we are going to need. So I plugged in our 24 pin cable, two 8 pin EPS cables to add additional power to our CPU. I plugged in an 8 pin PCIe cable. We're going to need the 6 pin connector from it to power our Lian Li Uni fan hub. And I plugged in a 12 volt high power cable to power our graphics card. So importantly, we're going to want our power supply's intake fan facing out the way, and then we can go ahead and set it into place at the bottom of the case. And then we're going to use four of the screws labelled 6 32 by 6 millimeters to secure the power supply into place. So our two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard, so we can go ahead and bring them through the cutouts, line them up with the headers, and push into place. And then we'll just pull the excess cable through to the back, tidying the cables up with the included cable combs. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. I've got three of Leon Lee's TL LCD Uni fans to install at the bottom of the case, and you can see these are reverse blade fans, so we're going to have the good side of the fans on display, but they'll be bringing cooler into our graphics card. So, first thing for us to do is to join the three fans together. We're going to be able to remove these spur connectors on the end of this fan. It's just a matter of twisting them round anti-clockwise and pulling to remove the connectors. Then on the other side of the fans we can take our fan cable that comes with a triple pack of fans. We're going to line it up and push up to lock it into place. So space at the bottom of the case does actually look to be pretty tight for these fans. First thing I'm going to do is feed the connector through to the back. And then I'm going to set the fans up sideways, getting the connector into place, and then I'm going to be able to flatten the fans down. And they literally fit and no more. And then we'll secure the fans into place with the included fan screws. We can then set a standard blade fan into place at the back, and we'll secure it into place at the back with four of the smaller fan screws. So the next thing to do is connect our fans up to the hub. And this fan has four ports for fans, and they're labelled 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to take our rear fan and plug it into port number 2. 
and our bottom fans will plug into port number one. Coming from the bottom of our hub, we've got some cables. So the first large cable is a six pin PCIe cable and this is gonna power the hub. So I have plugged into our power supply a six plus two pin PCIe cable. So we can go ahead and plug that into the hub. We've got three other cables we need to plug into our motherboard. We've got a three pin five volt RGB cable, a four pin PWM cable, and a USB 2.0 cable. So we'll pass those through to the bottom of the case and get them plugged in. So you can see down the bottom of the motherboard, we've got RGB headers, we've got another system fan header, and we've got USB 2.0 headers. So we'll go ahead and get the cables plugged in. So you'll see at the top of the case, it says place controller here. We've got a little magnetic pad that have attached to the back of our Lian Li Uni fan hub and then we're going to be able to stick our controller onto here. We're now ready to start working on our I.O. and the first thing for us to do is join our fans together. And they are magnetically attached, so all we need to do is bring them together and that's them connected up. And our fan cables are also going to connect magnetically, it's just a matter of joining the cable up and they're going to connect. And coming from the ends of these fan cables, we've got a 4-pin PWM cable to plug into our CPU fan header and a 3-pin 5-volt RGB cable and we'll plug that into an RGB header on the motherboard. We can then set our fans onto the radiator and secure them into place using the long radiator screws. So coming from our pump, we've got two cables. We've got a 4-pin PWM cable. We're going to plug that into the pump header on the motherboard. And we've also got a USB 2.0 header to plug in to our motherboard. The screen on our pump is removable. It's magnetically attached, so it's just a simple matter of pulling it to remove it. And that will make the installation easier. So we can set our I.O. into place at the top of the case. And we'll secure it into place using 12 of the short radiator screws. And we can then replace our case's top panel. I've just removed our front panel and I'm going to route the cables coming from our I.I.O. through to the back of the case. And then we can bring our cables back through. We've got three fan headers at the top of the motherboard. The one further towards the left is our CPU fan header. So we'll get the four pin PWM cable plugged into it. And we've got an ARGB header here, so we'll plug the ARGB cable into it. Next thing for me to do is add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. If you're using the I.O. from new, it will have thermal paste pre-applied, so there's no need to add any extra. So one thing I always like to do to make the cooler installation look really clean, I like to wrap the cables up around the cold plate. So the brackets are going to help hold the cables up towards the top of the motherboard. And as well, I'm going to take the USB cable and set it up into place as well. And then we can line the I.O. up with the bracket we've installed on the motherboard. And we're going to want to use the thumb screws with a little lip in the middle and secure one at each corner. And then it's just a matter of tightening each corner up in turn. Then we're going to be able to return our screen. And if we pull our excess USB cable up towards the top of the case, and we'll pass the cables through to the back. Our I.O. pump header is the one at the right at the top. So we'll get the PWM cable plugged into it. And then we'll bring all the excess cable through to the back and we'll plug the USB cable in at the bottom. We're now ready to install our graphics card, so we're going to be removing the second and third expansion slot cover from the top. We can then line our graphics card up with the slot, and then once we're happy everything's lined up correctly, it's some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. And we can secure the graphics card into place with the two screws we've just removed. We can then bring our 12 volt high power cable through the cutout at the bottom, line it up with the graphics card, and push into place. And then we'll tidy up the cable using the included cable combs. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management and get the panels back on again. Okay, so that's the build complete. If you don't know how to set the PC up, including installing Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, I've made a separate video on that, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. I've also made full guides to setting up these LCD fans from Lian Li, and also the IO. so you'll find links to all that in the description. 
What I want to do now is take a look at the temperatures. So our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D idled at 48 degrees and reached a maximum of 77 degrees during a 10 minute night to 64 stability test. The Strix RTX 4080 idled at 28 degrees and reached a maximum of 63 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise, we'd average noise levels of 41 decibels at idle and 47 decibels under load. So in terms of the build itself, I'm really delighted with how it turns out. I think the LCD screens on these fans look absolutely amazing. And because your GPU is actually so high compared to the bottom of the case, you get a great look at the free fans at the bottom. In terms of building, if I was doing it again, would I do anything different? The only thing I would do is put some RGB fans at the front of the case. Originally, I thought it was going to look quite well and you wouldn't really be able to see through that front panel. But actually, with all the RGB in the case, you can actually see through. And you can see those three front fans at the front of the case, and it just doesn't look great. Um, NZXT do offer an RGB version of the case, and I think this would probably be the one that I would go for. So in terms of the case itself, in general, I am pretty happy with it. The build quality is excellent throughout, and it was a pretty easy case to build in. There is only two things I wasn't particularly keen on. The first is the fact that the three front fans are DC voltage control fans with three pin connectors on them rather than proper PWM fans with four pin connectors on them. The issue with that is you're going to have to run those fans a little bit faster and use voltage control rather than PWM which allows you to bring the idle speed of those fans down further. Second thing I'm not so keen on is the position of the GPU. It does look really high and slightly out of proportion being up in the middle of the case. Um, but that is really the only issues with this case and otherwise it is a really solid case. So like I say, if you see any of the parts you like, you'll find links to everything in the description. If you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.